Hello, YouTube. What you see here is, of course, my main computer. And it's really freaking dark in here. You can also see that very clearly. But uh, the main discussion part of this video is actually what I'm about to boot right now. By the title of the video, you have already distinguished what this video is going to be about. And that is the following. I have finally managed to successfully hackintosh this X79 computer, thanks to the IATCOS community. Oh, well, actually, to the IATCOS uh, website. The website is www.iatcos.me. And what they will do for you is, if you give them a small uh, donation, 12 or $24, depending on how quickly you want your software, $12 is a regular fare, and $24 is their premium, so you will have your operating system up and running faster, most probably. Uh, and you have to send a hardware dump of all of your components for, to them as well. So that does not mean that you send them a specy list. They have a guide for that, uh, for making a proper dump of your system components on their website. And they will uh, contact you on your email, sending you a torrent link, and you will be able to successfully hack and touch your computer to try out OS X. Alright, so now that we've booted up, I'm going to turn off the video light and get back to you guys. We no longer need all the added lights, so now we just have the screen in front of us. As you can see, both monitors are working. Um, once I completed the installation, there were two quirks. One was that USB ports were not working. I have not resolved that just yet. I have four working ports out of the, uh, I believe, 14 or 16 ports on my computer. It's pretty much just the uh, extra USB 3.0 controller that seems to work just fine. I'm fine with that, honestly. I don't use more than four peripherals at a time anyway. So if I have to use OS X, I'm just going to keep it this way. Because the only way to fix it is apparently to edit the DSTT, and that does not exist for this board. Nor am I going to make one. I've got more important stuff to think about than uh, making DSTTs for this. So yeah, now it's pretty much just booting up, it seems. As you can see, got a bunch of apps installed, everything works. Uh, for sound, by the way, that was the second quirk. I had to install the latest version of Voodoo HDA. Seems to work just fine. Let's see if I can get... There we go. Here's the About This Mac screen. Apparently I have to use iMac uh, SMBIOS files. Because for some reason I tried to... You know, you always have to pick an SMBIOS that's closest to your particular hardware. And for me that would be the late 2013 uh, Mac Pro. Which is actually a pretty comparable model to this. But nope, I cannot get that working. Once I installed it SMBIOS I could no longer... Uh, get a screen at all. It would boot up, I would have the Apple logo and then the bar filling up in uh, El Capitan. And uh, once the login screen should appear, the screen just went completely blank. Not black, but actually blank, as in it could no longer detect the signal. But yeah, as you can see, I'm running the latest version, OS 10 El Capitan. I figured uh, to just uh, go balls to the wall and just install the very latest version. This uh, system can run from 1092 Mavericks up to, uh, well, anything. But uh, to get all hardware working, you need at least 1092 Mavericks. At least with this uh, GTX 780 Ti that I've installed. Which is, of course, 3 gig card, 16 gigs DDR3 quad channel, and, of course, my 6-core 4930K i7, which is picked up as a Xeon E5. And it's not actually 3.4 gigahertz, it's running at 4 gigahertz at the moment. So, yeah, I've got the NVIDIA web drivers installed. More, uh, you know, more of a precaution than anything else. I don't even know if this car works properly without them. But I figured uh, I could install them from the IATCOS uh, installer, so I figured why the hell not, and it works fine. Temperature is very low. Power output is very low under OS X. That's something that's really weird. Windows does not seem to be able to throttle my CPU cores down properly. And OS X actually, while the CPU is not even supported for OS X, does an excellent job. So yeah, SSD, hard drives, all that good stuff. So pretty much everything is working. This is a little bit of a bug. I have to log into iCloud every time I uh, boot up the machine, but I can deal with that. Dropbox is working. My hard drive is working. It's connected to the uh, AS Media SATA controller, so it's being picked up as external, but I don't even freaking care. What else do I have installed? Like I said, Voodoo HDA to get everything up and running. I've got smooth mouse installed, so mouse movement is a lot more Windows-like, and I actually like that. 
because I don't know, but when I'm working on OS 10, you know, on a trackpad, it feels just fine. But on a mouse, I think it's a little bit on the slow side, especially if you're trying to play a game. I mean, I've got a bunch of games that will run on OS 10, for instance, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, but it's just unplayable on Mac. The mouse lag is beyond anything I've ever experienced. All right, got some more comments on my latest Mac Pro video. I'll have to check that out soon. But uh, yeah, just uh, really wanted this hack and charge going because I'm just not using OS X enough to satisfy my needs to, for an operating system. I feel when I'm working on my MacBook Pro that I'm, you know, I'm just cocking about all the time. I'm sometimes I'm doing stuff that's more Windows-like, and I'm like, ah, oh, damn it, I just want you know, get to know the operating system properly and use it the way it's supposed to. And you sort of lose the feeling with the operating system if you only really work on it like two to three hours a day, or well, sometimes more like four or five hours, but never any full days, like full day and night, and then you wake up and you see OS ten again. It's not like that, like at all. I see Windows more than I see Mac, and that's, that's a shame because I really, really, really like OS ten and the way it works. I just have. To, I want to get more efficient at it, so I needed this Hackintosh to get the, to uh, to work on this machine, and this is also a way for me to uh, justify keeping this machine running. Because if this wasn't gonna work in the end, I was actually contemplating getting like uh, a 2012 Mac Pro at some point, even though that's just dual 1366 and a lot more in it, a lot less efficient than this machine would be. And just overall, a real waste of money, I think. Because this thing can do what a Mac Pro can do. At least for my use case. So there's that. That is no review of the Hackintosh on my system. Running for one terabyte internal hard drive, which usually El Capitan uh, should hate. But on my system, it works absolutely fine. I can install updates to Office 2016. It loads up quickly enough for an unupdated version. This is just the RTM release. I haven't actually done anything to it. No updates whatsoever. I can update. It's volume license, so that's fine. But uh, yeah, it's running absolutely beautifully. I can even uh, do all of my Windows remote desktoping that I need to do for a project at school. So let's just start it up. Continue. And there we go. We're in my uh, school's Windows Server environment, where I still have some work to do this weekend. But nevertheless, Microsoft Remote Desktop is an absolutely great app if you have to uh, work remotely on Windows systems like I do. So yeah, that pretty much concludes my video on my successful Hackintosh. And uh, yeah, this is an encouragement for everyone that uses weird X79 boards that cannot get to the installer and can cannot get it up and running, especially if you have an MSI Big Bang X Power 2 like I do, it is possible to hack and touch your machine, you just have to order a custom distro from iatcos.me. They'll help you, they'll make it work. You just need to know very basic things about uh, hack and touching like boot flags, SMBIOS, patching uh, your SMBIOS, working in your chameleon bootloader, how Clover works, if you want to use that. You just need the basic knowledge of hack and touching added with the expertise of IATCOS for writing installers for specific hardware. That's all you need to know. And that's all I want to tell you today. This is my video. This concludes it all. Hackintoshing on my system has finally, finally happened. Hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.